I'm Katie O'Reilly, host of the KDO's Food Carnival television show. This year on June 30th at the DuPage County Fairgrounds, I'm hosting the first ever Artisan Food Festival, a taste of the state. We are bringing it back to Illinois. The Artisan Food Market will feature artisan food creators of small batch delicious items for sale to the public, samples, everything and the restaurants featured all Illinois with their famous menu items. And the culinary stage is not to be missed with celebrity chefs offering cooking demonstration with kitchen hacks and different tricks that you don't want to miss. And music will fill the air all day with live bands and DJ music having some fun, craft beers, rolling right into the evening with some serious blues. And for a little bit more elegant style, join us for our gala, Dining Under the Stars, Seven Courses, designed by me. The Artisan Food Market will feature artisan food creators of small batch delicious items for sale to the public, samples, everything and the restaurants featured all Illinois with their famous menu items in tasting portion. Admission is five dollars at the gate or free with advanced registration. Go to artisanfoodfest.com to get tickets today. Artisan food producers and restaurants may sign up to be a vendor at artisanfoodfest.com or call 773-941-7753 for more information. Dip my shrimp. Thank you for joining for tasting time. Hi, I'm Katie O'Reilly, and welcome to Katie O's Food Carnival. It is summertime in the city and I am loving the weather and it makes me want to take you inside my kitchen and let's get cooking some of those classic favorites that we all crave in the summer. I've got some extravagant dishes that you are going to want to eat and then eat again. Let's jump in that carnival kitchen. We are cooking in the summer. Katie O'Reilly and welcome to Katie O's Food Carnival Summer Cooking with the Katie O. Oh, but let's start off with our drinks. Look at these refreshing beverages I'm holding. And believe it or not, they're without alcohol. I know you can always add a little twist and a spike if you want one, but sometimes in that hot, hot summer heat, you want something so completely refreshing. Watermelon juice. I swear, juice your watermelon, add a lime, and pour it over ice. It's sweet, it's refreshing, it's decadent. Oh, you don't even need to drink it fast. It just cools your throat and quenches your thirst. And then what I really love to do is infuse water. And people are like, what is it? I take my favorite herbal teas, I steep my water, turn it into like some great fruit flavor. So I've used hibiscus and raspberry and pomegranate, little fresh orange while that water's still hot and steep in a little lemon, then I chill it off. Sometimes I sweeten it with a little honey if I want, so it becomes like almost a sweet tea, but not as sweet as a sweet tea. Garnish it with a lemon or to be really creative, a grilled lemon. Over ice, and that's your water of your dreams. I swear to God, a summertime, beautiful refresher. Clearly, I like to cook summer treats. Some of my all-time favorites start with our marinated meats. Let's see how we marinate our meats to make a taco and then an Asian seasoning. Let's start with our marinated taco. Hi, Katie O here in the Carnival Kitchen and marinating steak is a summer favorite and I'm gonna show you two different ways because you can go Mexican with your marinade on a beautiful skirt steak or a flank steak 
or we're gonna go Asian with a hanger steak. Let's start with our, our flank steak. I'm gonna show you that flank steak shows when you purchase it, a lot of fat, a lot of movement in the meat, and it's not gonna look like your most tender piece, so the marinade is going to be essential. You can do this night before, put it in your fridge, you can do it in the morning when you wake up, but you wanna get that meat nice and thin, so those strips are thin, and the marinade is gonna go on and coat it and hug it and love it. What goes in our marinade? A Little bit of olive oil. Now this is gonna be about two tablespoons of olive oil. We've got, I love my garlic in almost anything. So I've got ground garlic and I've got this. This is about two tablespoons as well. And you decide how much you like, but this is gonna definitely flavor that meat. The, one of the things that's fantastic with the meat is gonna be lime juice, again, two tablespoons. Salt and pepper, about one tablespoon. You decide how much you want, but the marinade is gonna just kinda infuse the flavor, so, and break it down, those tendons. So we do wanna add a little extra, it won't oversalt your product. This is about a half of a tablespoon of cumin, and I've got a tablespoon of chili powder. Now we've got our greens. I've got green scallion, diced thin. That's gonna actually enhance the marinade, but it's gonna break down with the lime juice and get kind of flimsy, which is gonna be really cool. And this is just finely chopped cilantro. Make sure you take out the stems. Okay, all of this in there, I'm just gonna have to use my hands for a minute because what you really wanna do is make sure the marinade covers everything. Okay, you're gonna cover this. You're going to stick it in the fridge overnight, like I said, up to 12 hours, 24 hours if you want. I'm gonna set that aside, that is gonna be beautiful. When we get it out, it is going to be coated in that marinade. And one of the things that is a hint and a tip to working with flank steak or skirt steak is you can grill it and grill mark it in advance on your grill. Let's say you're cooking dinner a little later, it'll hold with these grill marks, but it's not cooked all the way through. Last minute, right before you're about to serve dinner, you go ahead, you take that, put it in your oven for about four minutes at 400 degrees. It's gonna cook the rest of the way, it's gonna heat your meat, and it's gonna really come alive. I've also taken that marinade and reduced it in a pan. I'll be right back to see, show you the finished product. This is an amazing treat. And the beautiful thing about that is you can Add just a little guacamole, wrap it in your corn tortillas, and you have an amazing meal before you. I like to use a little corn salsa, whatever you want, but that Asian marinade, or that uh, Mexican marinated steak taco is a beach favorite. And we can go a little Asian with it, with our Asian seasoning, and create a totally different effect Still, a totally easy summer marinated meat. Starting early, let me show you. KDO here in the Carnival Kitchen, and lately the trends have been with Asian marinades on meats, and I've got a killer one for you. So if you're headed in that direction this summer, just to brighten the palate, let's walk it through. I like to do this with a hanger steak because it just comes out beautifully, but you can use a lot of the steaks that are in the market. You decide what you want to use, but the marinade is the magic. So let's walk it through. All right, this is gonna be a little different than some of the marinades we've worked with because we've got two tablespoons of sesame oil for this marinade, and then two tablespoons of just like a canola oil. So that's our oil base. Now for our acid in this, we're gonna go with two tablespoons of lime juice, and then one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar. And I always like the original flavor on the rice wine vinegar, but you decide. I like two tablespoons of soy sauce, always a good one. A tablespoon of sugar, because that kind of adds, it balances the acidity and the saltiness and adds that like umami flavor, which is fantastic. So instead of being just salty, we're adding the sweet, which definitely takes your palate in that interesting curve. Cilantro and green scallion, our herbaceous little twist, I love. And then let's get to our ginger. This is ground fresh ginger, and I'm adding that in, I've ground it up, 
beautifully. So it's all, actually, I, I just put it in a Roboco because I really wanted it finely ground for this marinade. But what I want to show you is actually what ginger actually looks like when you buy it at the store. So for you, you those of you who have not worked with ginger, it is going to come with a skin on. And many people say you can just take your spoon and scrape that skin right off if you see that, and that is probably your easiest way, and it gives you the most fruit of your ginger root. So you get the most meatiness, and you don't lose the content because really you're just peeling off the skin, which I love to do. Preserve your product and use as much as possible. Then, like I said, just grind it up. Now the beauty of this marinade is, yes, it's going to go on your steak, but you might wanna make an extra batch because this also can be reduced and made into your sauce or your relish for on top of your steak. And trust me, it is craveable and delicious. You will just be asking for more, so make extra. You're gonna love this one. So you can see that the flavor profiles in that Asian marinade are totally different than our Mexican marinade, so you don't have to be afraid of marinating meat more than once a week because you can flavor it totally different ways. And the cuts can vary. You can decide what's available, but oftentimes I just want to make sure when you're cutting your steak, you're cutting it against the grain. Let me show you really quickly. I have cooked it. It's out. It's rusted. What do we do from there? Something many people do not tell you, but it is essential when working with either flank or skirt steak or any of these cuts that have these grains going across them. Okay, so whichever one you choose, it's essential to cut against the grain. And it's gonna be confusing because the grains are going this way and that's the thin part of your meat. So normally you'd wanna cut this way. What you have to do is cut it in half and cut this way. It's going to make for so much better eating. You're gonna be able to chew through that meat. It's gonna make it feel tender and especially if you're making a taco or actually just plating it up for people, but a taco, it's essential that you can bite through your meat. Otherwise, you're getting a big chunk and you're like, it doesn't taste right. This is the trick. Do you see that here? That's gonna keep it nice and palatable for you. Don't forget, it's a big mistake if you cut it the wrong way. You wanna cut it against the grain. Okay, so if you're not a red meat eater, I'm gonna take it to the fish. Let's blacken some grouper. Let me just show you how you actually blacken the, the fish itself. Katie O here in the carnival kitchen and fish that has been blackened is a summertime favorite. Baja Beach is what I say, oh my God. So what goes into blackening our fish? It is our blackening seasoning. And sometimes when you go into the market, you're like, it's all sodium, it doesn't taste the way I want. So let's kind of go through some basics so you can potentially mix your own. And it's not an exact science, it's the way you wanna taste it. You're gonna have some salt and pepper, so you're gonna start there. Garlic salt, onion powder, or you can do garlic powder if you don't wanna to get too salty, that's a big thing. You're gonna go with paprika and a little cayenne to your spice level. We're gonna also add a little thyme and oregano. After that, you can add some red pepper flakes. You can go in any direction you want, but what you want is a nice, dried, powdery rub. And we've got, I love to work with grouper. Grouper is swimming all over in the summer. It's fresh, you get it, it's available. And what we can do with this is make it into either grouper tacos or we can go with a grouper sandwich. So blackened is the seasoning of summer. And when you coat it, you have your blackened seasoning, you really wanna coat a full layer. Now grilling is beautiful. So you can also pan fry. So you decide what you wanna do, but you just wanna coat the fish, flip it, and not to cross contaminate that seasoning, we wanna get the other side and just coat it fully. That's gonna add beautiful flavor when it's finished. And that is gonna make, like I said, delicious tacos or sandwiches. All right, so once we have our cooked fish, we can go two ways with it. I love black and grouper tacos. I feel like I'm on the beach. I like them with a flour tortilla, believe it or not, but a corn, chunky jalapeno salsa 
and a mango salsa. And I know the people out there are thinking, what in the world? I love mangoes. I don't know how to work with them. I'm going to show you really quickly a tip and trick to working and making a quick mango salsa. There are certain times of year where mangoes are just so plentiful and so full of luscious flavor that you need to work with them. But they are so intimidating to so many people. I wanna show you and introduce you and make you comfortable with the mango. First of all, when you're choosing a mango, if they're hard, they need to ripen. So you need a little softness, but not mushy. All right, so you're going for a little give in ripeness, and then you'll know they have good flavor. And you take your knife and you just absolutely peel them with your knife. Watch your fingers, of course. And the most difficult part of all of this is gonna be that they have a pit in the center. So once you get it completely peeled, and the reason I like to do it this way is because technique wise, I can get just the skin, but it is a little dangerous for those of you who do not work with knives often. So do not necessarily do this yourself. But I wanna show you because this is one of those things that will make your palate sing and dance. You wanna identify where your pit is and then slice down. Once again, you're gonna get some meaty pieces and then you're gonna get the fruit off the side. Anything after that is gonna depend on your actual mango and how much you wanna get close to that pit because it's right there. Then we just take and we slice and dice. And I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because I have Kitchen Magic here. That's a gorgeous mango. I've got it already diced for you. And this is going to be the making of a mango salsa. So we take our chopped, finely chopped, all uniform little cubes, perfect for a salsa. Add that, depending on how much you wanna use. You wanna use equal parts mango, red pepper, because the red peppers at this time of year are so nice and sweet. Only about mm, a third of the portion in comparison, depending on, like I said, that's gonna be your red onion, okay? And then lime juice, we're gonna use about a third of the portion, same amount as the onion, and that's gonna be our marinade. We are gonna stew this, let it sit in the fridge covered for probably two to four hours, so it gets nice and infused. And when you're ready, you are gonna chop some beautiful cilantro leaves, and some green onion and add it right to it and mix it all in and that's gonna be your mango salt. Little guacamole with that, some lime wedges, pico de gallo, you are in heaven. That's your meal. You can add cheese. I sometimes like a little shredded cheddar but people are weird with fish and cheese so you decide. If you're not into that, Let's just go straight to Florida, to the beach, and get our fish, our blackened grouper, in smaller pieces, onto a brioche bun, with some onion, a little tartar sauce, a little chopped tomato, lettuce, whatever you want, lemon squeeze. I always like a little Tabasco, brighten it up, bring up that vinegar hit, a little peppery. Ah, oh, it's sloppy, but it's delicious. It's like the gooey, dripping sandwich that you want that comes straight from the sea. But that spiciness is summer. You want to eat it in your bathing suit. And drink a coolie. Beverages, for sure. All right, now I'm going to take you to some of the other areas that you would maybe pair these with. And I love to bring the grill into my salads. And I've said this before, grill your romaine. It grills up beautifully. Take your big romaine, and it could be jumbo if you needed to. Cut it in half, olive oil on that grill, hot grill, 30 seconds to a minute. You're gonna get some charred romaine. Cut that end off. If you don't wanna cut them up for yourself, treat them like a steak. Add some bacon, blue cheese, tomatoes, balsamic, and a little scallion. Oh my God, that in and of itself is like a summertime meal. So don't think that you have to go with a full meat Highlight a little bacon, that's it. You've got the grill on your plate. I also love, love, love a grilled Caesar. So if you wanna take it in a different direction, grill up your lettuces, Caesar. Grill your bread, get that grill flavor in there. Okay, I think that when you have vegetables that are growing plentifully or you get a home delivery of vegetables 
or your garden's plentiful or you just have tons around, turn them into rice. A beautiful grilled rice pilaf with all those summer vegetables. Don't be afraid. Put them all in there. They will flavor it beautifully. It pairs with anything here. So eat that. Eat those vegetables. Get them tied in. I don't want to neglect the other salads. Make a wedge salad. If you don't like blue cheese, I'm showing you a Greek wedge. Greek salads seem to scream seaside to me. I don't know if it's the vinaigrette and the crisp cucumbers, but it just highlights everything. But if you're not a fan of all those crazy ingredients, make yourself a delicious garden salad and just be breezy. Just be free. Live in the garden. It's fun. You don't have to go overwhelmingly exorbitant with any of these things. Marinating vegetables is an amazing trick as well. Mushrooms that are marinated are brilliant. I oftentimes end up buying other people's mushrooms just to taste their marinades, but I like to do a little shallot, some fresh herbs, obviously olive oil, vinegar, a little bit of water in there, or you blanch whatever it is, and that will hold the water and add it to your marinade. So asparagus, I love marinated chilled asparagus. I love marinated chilled mushrooms. That could practically be my dinner some nights, but I know that that's not for everybody, but they're delicious. Take that asparagus and throw it on the grill. Put that olive oil on, grill it, but grill your lemon with it. Slice that lemon, grill it up. You are gonna have a, another element and another flavor profile that not only delights your eyes, but you can actually eat. So slice it, it gets sweeter than normally just bitter lemon. It comes out with that grill and it highlights, it really brings your palate up and lifts all those exciting elements of the grilled asparagus. So you've got your smoky grill and your, your really yummy grilled lemon and it's bright. Okay, right in front of me, I have salmon. Salmon is a summertime favorite. But how do we work it where we're actually able to be a little bit freer with ourselves and we're not standing over the grill, it can be delicate, it cooks fast? Packets, packets with salmon and garlic butter and grilled lemon. Let me show you really quickly. What speaks to this? If you don't like the blackened seasoning or you're not a spice fan, salmon is delicious in the summer. It is bright when you do a lemon butter accent. I love grilled lemon. So I am gonna absolutely show you that I slice and just grill my lemons and I put them on almost everything. And then what I love to do is char mark the salmon. I'm gonna show you how I built this because this is gonna go into a packet. It's rubbed with garlic butter with parsley and I've just partially cooked the top on the grill to get that smoky flavor in there. Then I place that in my beautiful packet. I layer it with my grilled lemon and then I make a package. Just fold it over, fold the top, fold the sides, and right before dinner, you can do this totally advanced, stick it in your fridge right before dinner. Let's say you're coming home from work or you have friends coming over or something. You stick it in the oven and it goes in for at 400 degrees at, for about four to maybe I would say, depending on how much you charred it on the grill, let's just take it easy. Go about six minutes. You can always put it back in depending on your desired salmon and how big your piece is. Now I'm, I'm working with a three ounce piece but oftentimes a portion size would be six ounces. So you decide how long you need. But look at this, let me reveal. This just came out of my oven. And the nice thing is the foil doesn't get too hot for your fingers. You can rip it open and oh, it's beautiful. Piping hot, smothered in garlic butter and lemon, and it's going to be delicious. This is summertime on a plate. Oh, yummy and easy. So when they unfold, they unfold beautifully. They're all moist and delicious. You won't even believe your eyes because they are perfectly prepared. They stay hot and steamy and you can put them on a platter, bring them outside, do whatever. Packet favorites, potatoes. Let me talk to you about various ways to do potatoes in packets. Side dishes can be like some of the most consuming items on the menu. So we kind of covered some of our proteins. Now what do you serve with it? Potatoes are amazing. And let me get creative with you. 
put them in a packet. I swear to God, I'm gonna show you so much creativity on this one, you won't even know where to begin. Everything is possible on this. Potatoes are a real treat. And when we slice them thin, we can add almost anything and they become the perfect vehicle to carry flavors for us. Working with packets of foil, you can throw them on your grill, you can throw them in your oven, whatever you want to do. Now, potatoes come in different colors, different types, different flavors. Let's dive in. I love potatoes with a little hot sauce and ketchup mixture because it becomes almost like a buffly, buffalo-ish kind of flavor and it caramelizes on your potatoes. So you just put that in with your sliced potatoes, wrap your foil into a packet and throw it on the grill or the oven. And it, depending on how thin they are, it could take about 15, 20 minutes. You almost can't overcook it. So cook it, if you're on your grill, don't go direct heat. It doesn't need direct heat, it needs indirect heat. So you're not really charring them, you're just cooking them on the grill with the heat. All right, what are some other options for us? Potatoes are absolutely perfect paired with rosemary. And if you have rosemary in your garden, they pick up and carry that fresh herb to your absolute delight. It's going to infuse it, and I like to toss a little bit of garlic and olive oil in with it. Potatoes also, good reminder, they absorb salt. So salt and pepper your potatoes and infuse that in when they're cooking. And they're gonna pick up what they need from that salt. And that's gonna make them delicious. Just work, if you're really simple, or you have people in your family that don't want anything green on anything, your potatoes come in purple. Get creative with those fingerling potatoes. That's what I say. Go and buy the variety pack or hand pick them at the farmer's market. Great time to incorporate color into your food. Everybody feels festive, it brightens up your plate, and you really don't have to do much. Always add a little bit of some sort of lubrication, either butter or olive oil, something to keep them nice and moist, and salt and pepper is a must. So those three things are absolute. After that, let's continue on. For those more intriguing palettes, blue cheese in your potatoes. Oh yeah, it'll melt down and cover those potatoes. And depending on how much you like blue cheese, a little goes a long way, but it'll just add those bursts of flavor while you're eating them that you're gonna really feel like that's a jazzy little earthy bite when you're getting there, kind of almost fermented and funky because blue cheese has that, that, that funk that we like, and especially with a good steak. It is delicious. You can go balsamic in with that or drizzle it afterwards. Always get creative. Don't put limitations on yourself. If you like the flavors, bring them out. Summertime's perfect. Okay. I love caramelized mushrooms and onions, so to put them in with my potato and then wrap them in this gorgeous packet is incredible. Of course, you know me, I need to sprinkle with fresh herbs, so I'm going to put some sort of green in there. A little bit of garlic, the parsley, again with the rosemary if you want. If you have kind of sage and that's your flavor, chives, anything you're growing in your garden, get them in there, use what you have. And if you're not a white potato fan, a much more healthy alternative is the sweet potato. Sliced so paper thin. I actually treated these with a little twist because sweet potatoes are brought out with butter and honey. Their flavor is absolutely brightened and taken to a whole new culinary level. It's going to once again marry with whatever you're matching it with. That's gonna go with your steak, it's gonna go with your fish, it's gonna go anywhere you want. And these are so easy, you can do them early in the morning, let them sit in your fridge, and just cook them while you're cooking the rest of your dinner. We want you to enjoy your summer nights, not be slaving in the kitchen. So, get those potatoes wrapped early. I'll be right back with some very simple summer dessert treats. Look at this fruit platter. If you can pull this off or anything like it, break it up different nights, do different things. The berries are robust and gorgeous. It's like Earth's candy, nature's candy. Why go anywhere else? However, some of us need a little bit more of a treat. Bake off some cookies. Bake them off in advance. 
You can even make the dough and freeze it. Keep it in your freezer and bake them in small batches. Thanks for joining me. You know I love our time together. And I look forward to seeing you again in the Carnival Kitchen.